Smart casual basically just means nice clothing, just standard men's clothing that you would find at like J. Crew or The Gap, except better, more expensive, oftentimes made of performance fabric or nicer, like organic cotton, Pima cotton, stuff that retails for way over what something like Gap or J. Crew would retail for, but worn in similar circumstances, maybe you work at a, you know, boutique. I don't know. You make you make artisanal magnets or whatever. You have an open open office, and you need some nice chinos that you can also take hiking. A lot of overlap between smart casual athleisure and outdoor clothing. These are the best smart casual brands that I am aware of. Three sixteen is an insane brand at the moment. One hundred and fifty four percent sell through as of uh, the time of the menswear manifesto being collated compiled. High average sale prices, uh, they're based in New York. Everything sells, every category is in high demand. Every single category will make you great money. Are you likely to find 316 all that often? No. These are the brands that you want to be on the lookout for. These are the cherries on top of the smart casual cupcake. It's a big cupcake. There's so, so, so many brands that could fall under this category. There are more of them in the manifesto. Alex Mill is decent. It is relatively high sell through 88%, a little bit less expensive than 316. Pants are in especially high demand at the moment. Solid sale prices. This is going to be the story with a lot of these smart casual brands is just strong sell through, high median sale prices. So tons of stuff selling from 30 to 50 bucks commonly. Um, they're just solid, solid, solid flippers which is why I like, one of the reasons why I like this niche so much. American Giant, I have mostly found, or mostly found rather, jeans from American Giant, but they make clothes in every category. That's one of the other nice things about Smart Casual is they tend to make the entire spread of men's clothing. And a lot of the times they don't have a particular emphasis on one, although there are exceptions. There are Smart Casual brands that specialize in shorts or specialize in jeans or whatever. But a lot of them make the full, range shirts all kinds of shirts polo shirts t-shirts casual button up shirts dress shirts pants jeans shorts swimwear all of it american giant is 139 percent sell through decent average sale prices apolis another uncommon brand the sell through isn't crazy but the uh, sale prices are really strong uh shorts are doing well right now the uh, jackets do amazingly well. That's another note for Smart Casual is chore jackets, which are like shackets, like shirt jackets with a bunch of cargo pockets on the front. And almost all of these brands are doing really, really well. <clears throat> jackets tend to do really well in Smart Casual brands. In brands, period. I mean, most of the top selling items in most men's clothing brands are always jackets, various kinds of jackets. Smart Casual is not different. Ask it. 325% sell through for the entire brand. High average sale prices, relatively high, just decent sale prices. Yeah, this is a unconditional, pretty much unconditional purchase. Ask it. I don't know how to like differentiate these brands in terms of describing them because they all look pretty much identical. That's one of the reasons, another one of the many reasons why Smart Casual is so great is because they get picked over or passed over rather in the thrift stores because they look like nothing. They look like J. Crew and Gap. They're visually plain most of the time. It's like navy blue Oxford shirts and tan chino pants, except they're secretly much nicer than, uh, allegedly much, much nicer than the standard run of the mill mall brands and smart, uh, or fast fashion brands rather, which could potentially count as smart casual. Uh, so the thrift stores don't know to price them up. Your competition doesn't know to grab it. Uh, there's also tons more of these brands that uh, I simply don't know about, and you're not going to know about them until you run into them, and it's probably the one time in your life you're going to find it. But if you find a piece that just feels nice and looks boring, and it has some kind of some kind of magic going on with the tag, it's it's in the right font, the right uh, you know sans serif font. Something about it just says it might be one of these smart casual brands. Very good chance that it is. So look it up. Bluff Works, 123% sell through rate, solid prices. Go for the uh, blazers and sport coats. They are in 2X 
demand, which is rare for blazers and sport coats or anything in the suit category, and their jeans are doing really well. Buck Mason is a brand that I would sell fairly often. I picked it up every single time that I found it. I picked it up even when it had flaws, like crappy t-shirts with little stains. It all sold, not all of it sold right away. The good stuff will sell right away though. Uh, outerwear, as in jackets, coats, vests, through the roof at the moment. Edgevale is 102% sell through with solid prices. All categories are go, everything is flipping, and uh, looks like shackets and corduroy pants are the hottest ticket items. I am referring here to the Menswear Manifesto, which is a free slash pay what you want product that I just released an update for. It's 401 men's brands broken down by every really meaningful metric, and uh, it lives on a Google document, and if you wanna download it for free, you can do so, but it will make me feel sad. There's a link to that in the description. Flint and Tinder, I have also found. It is more common than some of these brands. I believe it is a Huckberry brand. I can't get a clear read on what the deal with Huckberry is, but I think Huckberry is kind of like anthropology. This is just my interpretation. This could be totally wrong. It looks like it's kind of like anthropology is for women in that it's an umbrella brand that is constituted of multiple smaller brands. Everything touched by Huckberry appears to be great, and it's one of those families of brands, I guess, that uh, there's no really clear delineation between smart casual and outdoor. But it's all good. Flint and Tinder, 142% sell through, and even higher than average sale prices, so I would just go for it. Freenote cloth is out of control, 259% sell through rate and four out of six dollar signs for average sale price, which means it is over 100 bucks uh, average sale price, and all categories are at least 100% sell through or high sell through. Huckberry itself is a brand, 168% sell through, strong sale prices, shirts, pants, and jeans are doing the best. Also counts as outdoor clothing as I covered. Industry of all nations, 242% sell through. Uh, good average sale prices. Another one of these magical brands where absolutely everything that is on the market is flipping. James Purse, which you will often see as standard James Purse, is, uh, well, I consider it a mall brand. It belongs in the same breath as John Barbados, Vince, Everlane, brands like this. Not particularly valuable and usually not in particularly high demand, but James Purse is doing really well right now. 105% sell through, two out of six dollar signs for average sale price. So that is a healthy brand. And uh, everything is doing well except for jackets, which are so-so, and then swimwear, not so great, but swimwear should pick up in summer. Um, unusual for James Purse to be doing this well. It's usually good. Right now, it's really good. Ministry of Supply, Solid brand, 107% sell through, $2 signs, which means between 25 and 50 buck, uh, bucks, plural, for average sales price. And everything is in demand. A bunch of categories are in 2X demand. Mission Workshop is a small boutique brand based in San Francisco. They make backpacks and also some performance smart casual clothing. Um, insane average sale price of five out of six dollar signs, 104% sell through. If you are lucky enough to find it, I would just grab it. Might as well be a luxury brand. Mott and Bow, awesome brand, 266% sell through for the entire brand. Pretty much everything is selling. Uh, 25 to 50 buck average sale prices and I say here, tons of it is selling for 50 bucks. Norse Projects actually doesn't light up in the manifesto. It's 45% sell through and only $2 signs, so 25 to 50 bucks, which aren't amazing. I include it here just because I sold it so many times. Uh, and Pavlovianly, I am trained to like Norse Projects, so I endorse it for you. As a very, very rough rule of thumb, Scandinavian brands tend to be good. Not always, but they tend to be good. Certainly worth looking up. Orlebar Brown 
Oral Bar Brown, 119% sell through and $3 signs, which means 75 to 100 bucks for uh, most pieces. And it's all good. Our Legacy, low sell through, 39%, but relatively high average sale price. Um, this is not the most slam dunk of the Smart Casual brands, but worth knowing. I have seen it a few times. Uh, worth having in your back pocket. Certainly not a bad brand. Outer Known, I, is it Smart Casual? Another one that I'm including here just because I like it so much. This is one of my all-timer favorite brands. 101% sell through, $2 signs. It's not going to make you a ton of money. Most of these brands, individual pieces, will not make you a ton of money. Most of the individual pieces sell for under 100 bucks, and 50 bucks seems to be around where the prices start to plateau, regardless of the brand. Um, outdoor clothing tends to go, or has a higher ceiling of potential than smart casual. As with everything, there are exceptions. Outlier was an unfamiliar brand to me. 198% sell through, $3 signs, everything doing well. Uh, every category except suits is in the high demand slot and uh, suits are medium. Medium is a great place for suits to be. Uh, suits encompasses sport coats, blazers, and two-piece suits, and usually it's in low demand. Rag and Bone I'm including here. Uh, arguably it's a mall brand or like a luxury brand. I think it counts aesthetically as smart casual. 63% sell through, $2 signs. There is a high ceiling on this brand, having just given you that whole spiel. If you find leather from Rag and & Bone, and if you find denim from Rag & Bone, that stuff tends to be able to be worth really substantial money. And there is a pretty broad spread of how the categories break down in terms of popularity. Relwen, 148% sell through, $3 signs, everything in high demand, at least half of the categories are in 2x sell through. Uh, or higher, uh, I would go for it. it. Says wind pant pants can sell for over a hundred bucks. Look for the wind pant. Spear and McKay, another one of the rare brands where the suit category is in two X sell through. That almost never happens. Demand is really solid. Everything is selling reasonably well. One hundred nineteen percent sell through. Um, 75 to $100 average sale prices, go for it. Taylor Stitch, another all-timer brand, 146% sell through, $3 signs. Every single category is high sell through. About half of them are in 2X or higher sell through. If you find it, get it, grab it, put the thing down, flip it, reverse it, just put it up, it'll sell. Pretty much same goes for Todd Snyder. It's technically a designer brand. There are lots of designer brands that could count as smart casual, um, but I excluded most of them except for Todd Snyder, uh, or maybe all of them except for Todd Snyder. Again, just because I've sold it in the past and it's always done really, really well for me. 111% sell through, $2 signs, and everything except dress shirts is in high demand. We spit on the grave of dress shirts. Twillery might be an outdoors brand, might be a smart casual brand. 102% sell through rate. A mere scanty $1 sign for average sale price. I would still pick this one up if you find it because uh, the demand is really healthy. Uh, just solid, solid, like high end, middle of the road brand. Unbound. I'm pumped on Unbound. 825% sell through rate. $2 signs. But don't be thrown off by the $2 signs because. Uh, seemingly everything sells for like 40 to 60 bucks in Unbound. I learned about this brand because I was shopping for clothing for myself for this digital nomading thing, and I found this Merino t-shirt from Unbound that I'd never heard of, and I had already shuttered my eBay store, so I thought, and the numbers on it were so strong that I couldn't bring myself not to put it up on eBay uh, with only, I think, three weeks left in... Um, America, and I did that with full confidence that it would flip within a week, and it did. And it flipped for like 40 bucks, and I think it had a hole in it. It is Merino clothing. This is the rare Merino smart casual brand. You find performance Merino in outdoor brands all the time, not as common in smart casual. You could argue that 
it's a distinction without a difference. But this has different marketing. Um, actually, one of the strongest Merino brands that I've found in terms of demand. It's just insane. And finally, Western Rise, solid, 167% sell through, 25 to 50 buck average sale price. All categories are go. Most of it flipping for 50 to 70 bucks, I say, in my little notesies. Um, Western Rise, grab it. And like I said, there are a ton of brands that could have made it into this video that are in the manifesto, not included here, uh, because they're more common or the demand isn't as high or they're not worth quite as much, uh, or simply because they don't know about them. And there are just almost innumerable little niche, smart casual brands that you can run across. Um, so like I said, if you find something that looks suspicious, look it up. Are you going to find these brands all the time? No, absolutely not. Are you going to find them occasionally? Yes, probably if you live in a major city. If you want more smart casual brands and more brands, period, menswear manifesto link is in the description. Donations are much appreciated. All right, thanks.